Well, we're finally in the garage and it's time to install two of these Lumar Access Shallow Water Anchors. I am finally going to get rid of my power pole, which I have had for well over 12 years. It's a Sportsman 8 foot. It's driven by a hydraulic pump. I'll show you that setup. But what is unique about these Lumar Access Shallow Water Anchors, they are driven by a worm gear and they are electric. There is really only two wires to hook up. So stick around for this video. It's gonna be an interesting one. We'll take out the old power pole, hydraulic pump, and wiring. Then I'll go in and I'm gonna show you exactly what comes with the Lumar shallow water anchors. We'll go through the accessories, kind of what to expect during the install. Then we'll mount the quick release brackets, get the poles on the boat, hook up the wiring, and show you the finished product. So stick around, it's Level Up with Mitts, and these are the Lumar Access 8-foot shallow water anchors. Previously I did a video where I opened the box, didn't install, but I installed them on the workbench. If you want to see that video, it's linked below, and it was a quick install to test them. I couldn't do anything during the winter, the boat was under wraps, but now we're actually installing them on the boat. So quickly, what we have here, these are the contents of each shallow water anchor. First, you have the control boxes, which are already pre-wired. On the side of the control box, you actually have a up and down switch. I'll get into the wiring in a little bit. Accessories wise, you have the lanyard for the remotes, two Allen wrenches, four large washers, four medium washers, two sets of nuts and bolts, some screws, which are for attaching the box, and there's a pack of bolts for the cover plate. That is what comes with each anchor. This set for anchor A, this set for anchor B. The additional pieces which I grabbed are these quick disconnect mounts. Basically, four holes. I can mount it to the back of the boat. Dovetail, the anchor slides right in. And then there's a plate to cover them. So we'll get into that once we get them on the boat. Pretty much the next step for me is we're going to take the old power pole off the boat. I'll have to undo the hydraulics, get rid of some of the wiring, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but then we're going to dive right into the install. So stick around. Again, it's Level Up with Mitts. Hopefully you like what you see. Comment, subscribe, check out the channel. we got a lot to show you. Like I mentioned, this power pole has been on the boat for, it has to be at least 12 years. It was one of the first generation Sportmans to come out. It's an eight foot. I have replaced this hydraulic pump twice. And at additional times, I've had the cap split twice, leak hydraulic fluid all over the boat. And if you can see in this compartment where everything sits, you have the hydraulic pump, you have the in and out lines, you have the wiring, you have the control box, and you have an additional box for the wireless remote or switch. All of that has to be wired up. There's been multiple times where I've dealt with wiring issues during a tournament. I've blown fuses and different things. So we're going to simplify this quite a bit. And I think the longest part of this is going to be taking the old power pole off versus installing the new ones. So I'm just going to probably time lapse this one. We're going to take out the hydraulic pump first, disconnect all the wiring, and then get the power pole off the back of the boat. These quick disconnect brackets actually have the same hole pattern they actually have the same hole pattern as the power pole so I can reuse this mounting template and then mirror it on the other side the only thing I'll have to do is pass the bolts through get them in and tighten it down we're well on our way to having these on the boat you want to make sure when you mount your quick disconnect or you drill and mount any way to the boat use marine grade silicon and make sure you use plenty of it you do not want to have to deal with leaks and you definitely want to seal it up nice and for those of you who are wondering and if i'm being aggressive if this was fiberglass i'd be much more careful but this is aluminum this is a tracker avalanche and it's a stretched aluminum hull so therefore I can actually drill right to it with a mounting plate behind it and not have to worry. So I'm pretty proud of myself. I thought of a pretty creative way to mimic this mount to the other side so they mirror each other. You really want to have them 
in the exact same spots on both sides. Uh, it'll make the timing of them going down the same, plus it's just gonna aesthetically look better. So what I did was I cut out a piece of cardboard that fit right around the cleat and matched up right with the contour. So I can go to the other side, get this on, and have this match up with the four holes. It'll get me pretty close, but then I'll obviously measure and make sure it's all right before I drill. Uh, at this point now is when you want to be the most careful. You want to drill once. We're on the other side of the boat. I have my template. Basically flip it over, put it on. I'm gonna mark off the four holes. I taped it up so I didn't have to draw on the boat. I'm just gonna confirm my measurements on both sides. We'll take it from the cleat over, up, down, every way that we can try to confirm it, and then we're gonna drill some holes. Well, now you trust your marks, you trust your measurements, and you drill. So there you can see I loaded it up. Now we head inside the boat and we work with the washer and the nut. We'll come back here and tighten them up. Well, this side went much easier than the last side. I think because the motor cables all ran through the channel where I was trying to get my hands I just couldn't get my hands around, around, around to where the bolts were. This side, clean pass through. I was able to silicon the back of this, get the washers on the other side, silicon the back of those, start the bolts. I was actually just putting a, um, a crescent wrench on that side, and I was able to hit a socket wrench on this side. Again, to reiterate, the Teflon nuts, you do not want to use an impact wrench. You can smoke that Teflon and you'll lose all that gripping capabilities and they'll start to wiggle loose. Just use a ratchet. They're not too painful to get in, but that'll definitely secure the fit and make it last a long time. Slides up nice. And just like that, one person, I got it in. Not too bad. Obviously, different boat, different shape. So coming in from the bottom, I could have used two people to hold the motor up. But as you saw, it was able to hold it with one hand, get the bolts in there. Okay, as you can see, both of the shallow water anchors are on the boat. I finished the installation. We have the quick disconnect brackets on. I ran the wires and I installed the battery so we can test it out. Now we'll go through how to program the remotes. So one remote works off of two anchors. Here is my setup. I mounted both control boxes. I changed the location so they're easily accessible. The wires loop right over and I actually have a separate fuse panel on the side specifically for my accessories battery and that's what these are going to run off of. So I tied those into the fuse. I really like to have everything on a master shutoff. So for all of my accessories, including these poles, I flip that one red master switch and I know everything behind that is off. The Epic battery, which is next in line, also has a power on and off button. So it's kind of a second fall protection. But outside of that, pretty straightforward. It's two wires, a positive and negative. You connect them and they're live. So now we're gonna go through a dry run and then testing each piece. So what's nice is each control box has its own up and down. So I'll be able to test them individually and then test them together. Bowl one. Bowl two. So that's down, they work. Up. Up. And they're on. So I'm gonna try to give you the best angle possible. Uh, I'll also explain it along the way, but basically, here's the instructions. Programming the remote, the first thing you wanna do is you press and hold the program button for three seconds. This is gonna clear the memory to the remotes. At that point, the light is solid, then it flashes, then the light turns off. So now, 
after doing that, my remote is not working because I cleared all the settings. That's step one. So here is how to program them both at the same time. Press and hold both mode buttons. Wait for the light to come on and be solid. Press the up on the remote and wait. Both lights flashed once. They'll shut off in a second. Now if I press down, both anchors go down. I press up, both anchors come up. The final thing to do is install the waterproof cover and this project's over. So again, it's level up with mitts. These are the Lumar Access eight foot shallow water anchors with the quick disconnect mounts. You can find everything I did and everything I talked about listed below. If this was helpful, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We'll be getting some on the water footage of these and also a three month and a six month review. I'd like to follow up and I'll let you know how everything was. So again, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.